first day I brought home my C5 Corvette, I knew I wanted to autocross and road course this car. And being it was in stock form, I knew it needed a lot of work. If you ever owned a C5, you know the stock seats in these cars are terrible. And I learned that firsthand by taking this car out to my first autocross event in stock form. And it did terrible. The seats had me all over the car and the suspension was really sloppy. And not to mention the stock front flat tires were in bad shape. So the very first thing I ever did to the car was replace the stock seats with these Amazon seats. And let me tell you guys, these are some really good seats. Don't let the price fool you. And after that, I replaced Hotchkiss Performance Sway Bars, which definitely transformed the car just with those two simple mods. Shortly after the seats were replaced, I went ahead and saved a little bit more money and bought me another set of C5 Z06 wheels and put some performance tires on there. And let me tell you guys, tires alone did a tremendous job as far as transforming the car on the road course. Once I replaced those three simple mods, I drove the car for the next four or five events to kind of learn the car's performance and capabilities at that point. And once I reached those limits of those performance mods, I knew I had to upgrade the suspension on the car and I chose to go with some QLA-1 double adjustable coilovers. And let me tell you guys, these things are fantastic. So that brings me to today. Car is great. Car rides good, drives good, steers good. But we've reached the capabilities of the brakes. The brakes now are on this car are at their max. Me coming into a corner really, really fast. I have to stop earlier than stopping later into a corner because the brakes just can't stop fast enough for me. So I've reached the limits of the brakes. I do have track day pads from uh, Power Stop. Really great pads. I love them. They work great until this point. Next step for this car would be to go up to a C6 Z06 brake calibers front and rear. But the only problem is I have to upgrade from 17 inch wheels to 18 on the front because the 17s won't clear the six piston calibers. Not a big deal because I have a set of 18s up there anyways. But for all you guys who don't want to upgrade, don't want to spend even more money on top of buying a big brake kit, you have to go buy 18 inch wheels all the way around and tires, which is another expense. Today, we are going to see if I have C6 Z06 rear calipers that usually they put on the rear of the C5s. We're gonna see if we can put these on the front. And not only put them on the front, but still be able to use and utilize the 17 inch wheel with these calipers. I don't know. I don't know if it's, if you can, I don't know if it's, it hasn't been done, I don't know. I haven't seen any videos, I haven't seen anything, anyone talk about it. So today we're gonna see if we can do that. Uh, I picked these up for 200 bucks, the calipers, cheap. I find a whole bunch of these everywhere on Facebook Marketplace, just the rears, not the fronts. Why people? I'm assuming because people who have C6, Z06s, they, if they have a drag pack setup, they want, they want a drag pack setup in the rear. Uh, they put a 15 inch wheel in the back usually. They can't fit a 15 inch wheel with these calipers. So they remove them and put a smaller caliper and then they sell these. That's more than likely what happens. Front, hopefully I got uh, OE C6, Z06, uh, new rotors and I went ahead and picked up some hog pads for the rear or for the yeah for the set these are a full brake pad it's not the pucks so this is usually these are basically autocross pads or road course pads so if this, this doesn't fit in the front I can always put these in the rear not a big deal I already have it and then I can go ahead and buy the six pistons later on but this is an experiment I don't know if this is going to work uh, hopefully it does. And if it does work, we're going to go and drive it around and see how well it breaks, see how it feels. Anyway, let's go ahead and get the car up in the rack, take off the wheels and get this apart and mock this up and uh, see if this is going to work. Here we have the stock rotor versus the C6 Z06 rear rotor. And a little bit of a difference. Not, these are even at the bottom. A little bit bigger, nothing too crazy. Now, side by side here. So yeah, the rear C6 Z06 rotor is a little bit bigger. It's not as wide as the um 
at least not as thick as the OE rotor here, but let's go ahead and get this onto uh, the hub here. Now we're just mocking up for now. I still need to break clean the oil off of the rotor here, but for now just getting everything mocked up. Moment of truth, let's see if this will actually But yes, the stock hardware is the same bolts that will fit the calipers. Good enough. Looks good so far. Promising so far. All right. Well. Oh, look at that. No rubbing. It's clearing the wheel just perfectly. Look at that. Sorry, I got that noise is just the the wheel's not on all the way. I gotta have the lug nut tight. I'm gonna tighten it more. But look at that. Plenty of gap between the wheel, at least the pop and the bottom. Plenty of gap, look at that. Oh my, that looks good. This is gonna work. This is gonna be awesome. All right, so here is a comparison of the stock C5 caliper next to a C6 Z51 caliper. A little bit of a difference, just a little bit, okay? this one. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it's a little bit bigger. Not by much, but uh, the size difference here is in the pistons. The pistons on these are a little bit larger than these. And then we have the C6 Z06 rear caliper. This is the rear. The six piston one is huge, guys. It's, I mean, it's like probably that much longer, like from here to probably to like right there. It's huge, it's big, it's, it's crazy. And these are big. Uh, compared to the C5 ones here and the regular C6 ones. Right, so I did have to grind a little bit of this lip here where the uh, brake line fitting fits just so that when I go to tighten this, uh, it'll clear the threads on the fitting here. press the pistons here and I don't know if you guys ever seen one of these tools uh, I like to use these I've had this for a long time basically it goes, fits in between the uh, brake pads here and you act like a scissor and it just opens up and spreads the brake pads out evenly really really cool tool not sure if you guys ever seen one of these before um, but yeah that's a really cool tool. I've had this for a long time. I'll be using this on the car once I get the line hooked up. Right now I'm just squirting brake fluid basically all over the table. Uh, caliper is ready to go. Gotta go ahead and brake clean off the, the rotor. It's all our brake caliper. All right guys, caliper and rotor, brake line all officially on and Everything is working so good so far. I haven't had any hiccups um, besides just grinding down a little bit of the back of the caliper just to get that fitting to fit. Uh, so these are the Willwood stainless steel brake lines I bought off Amazon made for the C5 Corvette. Basically fit on the C6 caliper. Anyways, everything's good. I'm not gonna put the wheel on yet because I do need to bleed the systems yet. And I still need to do the uh, the passenger side, which shouldn't be that hard because like I said, it's basically the same, same process I did on the driver's side. So let me go ahead and do that. We'll bleed the system out and top it off with a brake fluid and go take it out for a drive. All 
All right guys, system is bled. We're ready to put the tires finally back on and lower this car down and hopefully take it for a test drive, make sure there's no leaks. I went ahead and brake cleaned everything off the back here. Uh, I wanna make sure everything's nice and dry. So if I do have a leak, I'll know and, and know that it's not from the leftover brake residue that we, from the swap over. So I went ahead and cleaned everything off. Everything is nice and dry. We're gonna go ahead and put our 17 inch wheel back on the car yes i'll show you guys that this, this is a 17 inch wheel because some of you guys out there might be well he's lying they're 18s he never showed us the size blah 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 let me get this wheel on real quick so i can show you that this is a 17 inch wheel and not an 18. let's see where is the size right there 265 40 17. there you have it it is a 17 inch wheel not an 18 not a 19. kind of a little much here all right we are ready to go and break these brake pads in so first thing off obviously before i pull out of the driveway i want to make sure there's no air in the system once you start the car Make sure the pedal does not go to the floor. Once we make sure that's good, then I'm gonna pull out slowly and make sure there's no kind of crazy grinding or scraping noise coming from the front. Uh, once that's clear, we'll go take it down the street and we need to break these brake pads in. So from Hawk Performance, they require what they recommend us doing to break these brake pads in is make six to 10 slowdowns from 30 to 35 miles an hour to five miles an hour, do not come to a stop. And then we need to make two to three hard stops from 40 to 45 to zero and do not drag the brakes and do not leave your foot on the brake pedal when you come to a stop. Uh, after that, allow 15 minutes for the brake system to cool down and we should be ready to go. Let's go. Let's go break these pads in really quick. Then we can go ahead and uh, do some higher, higher stops. I'm barely just breaking them in. I can, I can tell a big time difference in the brake pedal. It just feels so much firmer. The car just stops so much better now. And I'm just barely breaking these things in. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple more stops. I'm gonna go to a different spot to kind of get uh, a little bit higher speeds and where I can kind of go back and forth. I'm gonna get up to about 50 miles an hour, 60, and I'm gonna brake and then I'll show you guys how fast these brakes just stop. Oh my God, I'm gonna try the traction on, make sure everything's good. These brakes are good. Let's get up to speed. Break. Dude, these brakes are crazy good like i can't imagine it once i do the four piston on the back also together with the ones in the front <sighs> game changer man all right guys that's it for that dude these brakes are freaking amazing i should have went with this setup a long time ago 
these things, I'm telling you guys, things stop on a dime. I'm gonna do the same combination on the rear, the same way I just did it right now. The four pistons on the front, I'm gonna do the same, four, same setup on the rear. I'm probably less than $500 total for this setup right now with the calipers, the rotors, and the pads. Just for a big brake setup. And best of all, best of all, I can keep the 17 inch wheels in the front. So for me to do this, the same setup on the rear, I'm gonna be less than $1,000 to get a really great brake setup on the car. And that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna go ahead and get the same setup on the rear. Uh, if you guys are interested in doing the same kind of setup, uh, if you have any questions about today's video, like I said, put it in the comments down below. Uh, I'll get to you guys as soon as I can. Um, up next, guys, I do wanna add some more power to this car. I'm gonna do like a heads or a can uh, combination. I'm not exactly sure what I should go with. Uh, if you guys have any recommendations, please put it in the comments down below and I'll check those out. Like I said, I do wanna make that video up next. I do wanna change out the stock. I still have a stock harmonic balance on this car. So I wanna go to a different harmonic balancer. Since I'm there, I'm gonna go ahead and do the cam and the heads. Like I said, put that in the comments down below and uh, that video will be coming up soon. So that does it for today's video, guys. Like I said, please like, please subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next one.